Hi everyone, it's Cinema Lovers Incorporated back at you again with a brand new video and today I am reviewing Ready Player One, directed by Steven Spielberg. I saw this movie yesterday, I was excited for it. Ready Player One, directed by one of, well, my favorite director of all time, Steven Spielberg. And personally, I feel like this is one of Steven Spielberg's weakest films he's ever directed. And... I'm not saying that it's not fun. It really is fun. I enjoy the look. I enjoy all the, the you know, the beautiful scope. All of these characters from the 80s, the 90s, the 70s, 2000s, everything. All this, all these pop culture references, the video games, the movies. All of it is eye candy. And I love looking at it. However, near the end, it does get tired. And it really feels like you're more of, you know, in a video game instead of, you know, watching the movie near the end because it, you just get so tired watching all of this stuff. Um, and the film, when I say it's one of Steven Spielberg's weakest, I'll talk about that. It just doesn't feel like a Steven Spielberg film throughout. There are some scenes where you feel like, oh, wow, okay, this is directed by Steven Spielberg. Other scenes just feel like he's doing something that he's never done before and he just doesn't feel comfortable. And if, if you, if you, uh, read online like I do Steven Spielberg said this is his third hardest film to make and you can see it the tone is all over the place the characters are bland and our main character is a Mary Sue most of the time everything he does leads to something else he does everything correct he knows every single point he knows where to go what to do and it's just bad cinema watching our main hero know all of these things you don't have tension. And plus, it's bad enough when throughout the whole movie, if they die inside the world, they respawn and they're perfectly fine. So there's no su suspense. There's no tension there. And that's one of the problems I have with Ready Player One. When his aunt dies, I felt nothing. You know, I didn't feel... I mean, I guess it was sad, but you didn't really know much about the characters. You didn't know much about his family. Uh, only that his parents died and the... You, you know. But... I just wish he was structurally better. You know, the way they set him up was not good. He knew everything. He knew, he didn't, he went on a challenge, an adventure, but, you know, there was nothing, there was no obstacles really. He, he got through them like that. You know, there was like one, one time where he like messed up a little bit and, th but that's all. So yeah, so his aunt and his, uh, step uncle kind of, they die and, when I said the tone is all over the place, literally like three minutes after this scene, they go to The Shining. You know, they go through the video game to The Shining, which is personally one of my favorite scenes in the entire movie. The Shining part, let alone, is really, really fun. Really, really awesome. But the downside is that this takes place like three minutes after his aunt is killed, and he acts like nothing even happened. The Shining part is su supposed to give you that nostalgic feel. It's supposed to give you that adventurous feel. You're supposed to go, wow, this is awesome. But the problem is the main character just lost a family member before this, and it just skips too much around. There are also some really cringe-worthy moments in this film. Some of the characters, especially the Japanese man, I don't know his name, but he's like, I'm talking ta. You, we have to go this way. We have to go this way. Like that. Stuff like that is really cringeworthy. And I love Alan Silvestri, the composer. However, he sometimes really went overboard in this film. There's some moments where the score is extremely lighthearted. Like, it's like... When there should be, like, I don't know, more of a beat to it. You know, there, it just should have been, it, it could be lighthearted, but also kind of a deep sound. But it's like, dun, 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 dun. and he did do the score to Stuart Little, so that might be the problem. And he did the score to Back to the Future, Night at the Museum, Predator, etc. And if John Williams did the music for Ready Player One, it probably would have been a completely different film. And those are my brothers, I'm sorry. Um, but yes, ladies and gentlemen, Ready Player One is fun, you know, you see all these characters. It's about our main character. It's like two, 2044 or 2045, 
And this guy, this man has created the oasis. And this is like this alternate dimension and anybody can go in the oasis. Anybody can be somebody inside the oasis. And when you put on these glasses, you're really inside. Um, and yeah, it's really, really cool. So you get to go in this, this reality and so many references to so many things. It's so freaking cool. And that alone is a price of admission. But unfortunately, like I said, the characters are weak. Uh, our main character's best friend. He's really tough throughout the film, and it's revealed that he's a woman. And when he's revealed to be a woman, she's just unlikable. She's a bad actress, and I just don't think she's funny. And it ruined the whole character. His best friend was supposed to be this cool guy, and I really wish they could have picked someone else. Uh, maybe a kid or something. That would have been really, really cool if it was a kid that was actually his best friend the whole time. Uh, it would have been unique and added some, you know, something unique. Um, but yeah, when she popped up on the screen and said that she was his best friend, that's when I just started disliking the character. Ever, ever since she was introduced right there, I just disliked her until the end. And that's very unfortunate because I thought his best friend was pretty interesting and funny and cool. Let's talk about the villain. The villain is the guy in all of these other movies. And his company is competing for, you know, the, the, the egg. When I say this movie, the elements are not good, is we have grown men in these weird rubbery suits competing for the egg. And we don't know where this company came from, unless I think he mentioned it. We don't know where the company came from. These are grown people doing this, and it just doesn't feel right. What I think they're doing it for like the fame. They're trying to get money, but it's just not a clear purpose for what they are doing and that's the problem the tone is all over the place like i said and the story is very hard to follow at times even i had a hard time following it um and you'll have to watch it again and again and again to explain it to me however personally i didn't really understand the whole film because it is so boggled down in so many plot points blah 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 even uh his his uh, love interest in the film is annoying when she's introduced in the human world she was all right, I guess. I mean, she was good to look at, but nothing special. It just felt like one of those generic adventure movies, you know, where they say, okay, we have to go here. Oh, but there's something there. But we can go there. Oh, but, but there's something there. But, 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 oh, the egg. Oh, we have to move there. Here, take the keys. Blah, blah, blah. Here we go. Blah, 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 blah. Oh, venture over. Woo! Uh, I did enjoy the look of the real world. I thought it was really, really cool looking, the atmosphere. And I enjoyed the game world too, even though the game world sometimes can be very exhausting. Just watching all of this stuff thrown at you. By the end, you will be exhausted. It's a very long movie. My brother Oliver wanted to leave the movie theater because it was so excruciatingly long for him. I, I, I never looked at the runtime, but I think it is a long film. And I thought the bad guy, you know, he was good. He's good in everything. He's always the bad guy. But there wasn't a clear focus. I don't know why he smiled at the end when he saw the egg. Maybe that was what he wanted to do his whole life. Maybe he was weak and he always wanted to see that egg, the Easter egg. But um, I don't know. And it's just some things don't make sense. Like I said, the plot is everywhere. It's very hard to understand sometimes, but if you want to go into this movie and enjoy references like The Shining, The Shining part is one of the best parts of the entire movie. I would personally pay to see this movie just for The Shining part. It was that good and that unique. And, you know, I love the reference. Way better than the Blade Runner. In the book, they go to Blade Runner, I believe. Thank God Steven Spielberg made The Shining part, part instead of the Blade Runner. So thank you, Steven. That's awesome. And ladies and gentlemen, yeah, that's about it. So this movie, it has fun, fun action moments, you know, that classic adventure feel, but the tone and the characters are so all over the place and the characters are so undeveloped that you just don't care. And our main character is such a Mary Sue that he knows every single thing. There's no tension. You don't feel like you're with him through this storyline. You just feel like you're watching people do things. You don't feel like you're with the character. And that's one of the problems for me. They're not fleshed out enough. And that's what really was disappointing for Ready Player One. And the music sometimes could really provide some cringe-worthy moments. The Back to the Future scenes were awesome. I really enjoyed the Back to the Future vehicle. But the music sometimes, 
that reference is Back to the Future. Whenever they hit near the end when the vehicle gets hit, it's like dun, dun, dun. it's really cringe worthy. You know, we don't need that. And uh, but I liked it though. They should have had dun, 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 but we never got that, and that was disappointing as well. We got the T Rex from Jurassic Park. We have freaking Godzilla. We have freaking King Kong. We have everything in this film. And you'll like it because it is awesome. You know, it just shows you all of this cool stuff. The Oasis, you know, it's beautiful. It's a beautiful reality. And, but the film unfortunately struggles with the plot elements. And you, at the end, may be scratching your head. And it feels a lot like At World's End, Pirates of the Caribbean At World's End, just because of all the plot elements going on. And you'll just leave scratching your head, most likely. I did, some other people, my whole family did. You might not, but I did, and I'm a critic, so it was hard for me to understand. So I have to go see that film again. This, it's a fun movie. Steven Spielberg, you know, he directed it. I'm happy he directed it. I'm happy for what it is. Is it a good film? No. Is it a bad film? No. It's just in between. I had a fun time with Ready Player One. It was really, really fun watching all of the things blow up in each other. But like I said, the characters are weak. Some of the things are extremely cringeworthy and extremely stupid. You'll go into this really loving the references. My mom loved the movie because it referenced the 80s a lot. But the plot just was weak for me. So I hope you enjoyed the review. What do you think of Ready Player One? Leave a like, comment down below, subscribe, do whatever the heck you want to do, and um, goodbye. Bye, everyone.